Hey guys, and welcome back to Rage Gaming. And of course, more No Rest for the Wicked. Today, I'm talking about a pretty big topic that's come up right now. I want to advise you guys as best I can. There's a lot of talk about the game's difficulty, how punishing it is with the food healing system, the durability pains, the challenge of the enemies. To me, this game is a weird half mix of a Souls game and an attempt at ARPG systems that can kind of clash pretty aggressively. But I wanted to make a video that outlines how I've approached things to avoid these common issues. Ultimately, the game does play like a Souls game, and because of that, we can approach much of the early difficulty with that in mind. But I also have a long-term plan as I go because it's actually an ARPG with those systems you need to be aware of. Items, the quality, the enchantments on them, weight management and defenses and so on. So today I'm talking about how that works and how I think you can do it yourself. So let's first talk about the most obvious one with Fillmore here. It's a blacksmith and the raw upgrading of an item. You first find this blacksmith in the keep while you're in the first area called the Shallows. By helping him, he agrees to go to town after you clear the way, which means killing the monster outside the city gates. Once that's done, you'll find him here on the lower west section of town where most of the merchants and vendors actually are. Fillmore works as a great vendor for buying and selling, and importantly, he sells some of the resources you're going to need to upgrade gear, like copper ingots. To upgrade a piece of gear, you need some basic resources. Weapon shards, which you find throughout the game easily, and then copper ingots. Like I said though, you can easily buy these from him, so it's easy, fast upgrading, and I would strongly recommend that. Now, by upgrading the item, the number goes up, you deal more damage. Fantastic. But there's also a number at the top right, which is fully blue on this one. This represents the tier it's currently in. So the first three upgrades in tier one are very cheap, very simple, just weapon shards and copper ingots. But now I'm starting tier two, it's much more involved. I need wolf claws, I need copper ingots still, but now I need iron ingots as well. Ultimately, the first three upgrades in tier one are very easy to get. And then the tier two materials, you're gonna need to go to the places like Black Trench, the sewers, or the Nameless Pass, which are basically the higher end zones for a current version of early access. So upgrading your gear is super straightforward and one of the easiest ways to increase your damage. But the more complicated and involved and pretty impactful way is enchanting. And that's why I've come to Eleanor here, which as you can see, right next to the blacksmith, just in the same section. Eleanor offers you really important options, enchanting, infusion, and runes. Enchants are really simple, though these positive effects you can find on your gear. Heat damage on parry, poise defense, stag resistance, stamina refill on parry. Purple items have even more potency or better enchants, but as you can see they can come with a negative which can be terrible. So I would just view enchants as powerful passives. A blue has some on as a bare minimum, but it can have up to four. A common item with no enchants is significantly lower in value than a blue item with relevant enchants. Look at my claymore here, we've got gained 6% health on a kill, fantastic for progressing a new area and not having to keep using heals as I get kill after kill. Increased focus after I parry, not relevant for me because I'm not parrying. Item weight decreased by 35%, amazing because a great sword in this case is a really heavy weapon. By reducing my weight load overall, I'm able to equip more items, which means more opportunities for potent enchants. Then the negative on this one is experience loss and damage taken, which is far from ideal, not as bad as it sounds, but definitely not what I want long term. So I think what I've shown you here is that enchants are pretty damn powerful and you absolutely need them on every slot. The thing is, you can get it really easily. With that helmet, I could easily enchant it and turn it from just a white to maybe a blue or a purple. In this case, I made it a blue. So its raw stats are the same, but now I have knockdown resistance and poise defense. This is significantly better than it was a second ago. The cost of enchanting, as it warns you, is that it's gonna remove your last two rune slots and the last three gem slots. So as you can see, I've got four potential slots on this as I upgrade it. It has now become a purple. It has only one gem slot, and if it had room potential, that would be reduced as well. Overall, that's a really good chess piece and well worth the experience gain loss, in my opinion. But it is an RNG simulator. I could have bricked this item and got something just really bad that I can't use, so I'd have to try something else. That's why collecting commons is so good, so that you can constantly come to Eleanor here and roll the enchant RNG just in case you get something that is really good that's relevant for your build. So that's enchanting and item quality. But what about the other two options? Firstly, you have infusion. You can take a weapon and put something into it. This gem will just increase the damage flat out by four to 15%, which is insane. But that's on a weapon. If I put it on a piece of armor, it will instead deal damage on parry. There are other kinds of gems though, like say the fire or ice ones. The ruby that I put on my greatsword adds heat damage, which has turned it into into a fire sword. Great against enemies weak to fire, which is most enemies. That could backfire against enemies resistant.
resistant to fire, but overall I find it consistently helpful, so it's worth it. Meanwhile, runes are fantastic. These are basically the special abilities of your weapon. In the case of my greatsword, it's basically a charged really powerful swing. And it's my biggest burst that I have available for my weapon. So in boss fights or mini bosses, I'm always looking to punish them with this. By dealing damage, I generate focus. And once the focus bar is filled, I can use this again. For survival purposes though, you can actually buy some from Eleanor. There's pulse of health to get a burst of healing. There's an aura of healing. Fantastic and important is repair. When you use this, it helps with your durability, which is a major gripe for a lot of people. Alternatively, you can take an item and extract its rune, which as you can see, will destroy the weapon. Or I can take previously extracted things and put it into another slot for a rune, like jump cut here, and then give it an extra ability to choose. I wouldn't recommend this in the early days because you only have so much focus to work with. Just be aware that in this case, this one-handed weapon can also take other one-handed weapon runes. But obviously my greatsword cannot take one-handed runes because they're two-handed weapons. So you need to be breaking down greatsword runes to put into other greatswords. These are very potent abilities though. The healing one, and the durability one, I'd strongly recommend to anyone that's struggling with those mechanics. Overall though, guys, you're looking for synergy. In my case, my playstyle is slow heavy hits. So in chance they're about restoring tiny amounts of health per hit, that's not good because I'm attacking slowly. I also am not parrying, so in chance the help when I parry is useless. But things like extra health and stamina, extra damage on my rune attack, item weight reduction, generate focus, attack speed or attack stamina cost reductions, these are all brilliant. And I think these descriptions are very obvious. You should be able to tell if something's gonna be useful to you specifically or not. So that's what you should be thinking about to do with your gear, but how do you get gear to enchant or get blues and purples in general? Well, you can find them obviously, but be aware of bounties and challenges, which are fantastic for this purpose. They provide you with lots of items, which can even be checked before you pick up a bounty, so you know that you're targeting something relevant to you. Bounties have you go after specific enemies in specific locations, giving you very clear objectives to work on. These also reward great currency, so you can buy what you need, or just always have funds for repairs to remove that problem entirely. You find these in Sacrament though, there's a special icon of a kind of bounty poster on your map where you meet the captain of the guard. There's dailies and weeklies. Bounties only allow one to be tracked at a time, while challenges can all be activated at once. So I strongly recommend you do that as soon as possible since it does not proactively track before you get it started. One weekly to begin with as you fight a monster here in Sacrament in the war room. It's a very easy fight. I did it at level four and the result was some icor for permanent upgrades. And also of course the weekly was complete. So that's two silver and good XP as well. So on that note, what should you do with your permanent upgrades? Upgrades from my court. I strongly recommend you use these on the ring slot upgrade option immediately. And these work like any other enchanted gear, but rings have really potent enchants. Improving my rune attack damage is amazing. Attack stamina cost, attack speed, movement speed, sprint stamina cost, all brilliant. This one could give me health on damage dealt. We've got equip load increase, armor increase. So by having those three slots unlocked, you can get these equipped immediately and really skyrocket your potency through specifically rings. So I think it's the most important thing to get unlocked before everything else. Now, in terms of consumables, these are pretty important. There's loads of different kinds, but the most important ones that I would talk about would be the vials of focus, which restore focus when you consume them. This allows me to constantly use my rune from massive damage. It's how I beat my way through bosses by punishing them with my rune attack, then using a vial of focus and then doing it again. Alternative to that, of course, is the different kind of oils. You can get element oils like this one that can give cold damage, fire damage, whatever. And if the enemy is weak to one of these, this can be busted. But blade oil is the most universally helpful helpful one. When applied to your weapon, it just increases your physical damage. So there's never going to be an enemy that this isn't great for. I apply these and use these when facing mini bosses or packs of enemies that are going to be a problem, or obviously boss fights. The more damage I do, the less threat and pressure I have for the longer period. You will find these consumables through the world, but the most reliable method is to buy them from the alchemist, which is an NPC here we can unlock. Also, you can unlock through him recipes to craft these out in the world so that you have the specific ones that you need on demand. The alchemist sells the blade oil, but then all the different element ones as well, on top of say the focus vials, which is just fantastic. If I have spare money, then this is where I would put it. You'll need to unlock the alchemist though. So following back west towards the keep, as you're crossing this bridge over here, there's actually a ladder leading down to a cave. In that cave, you'll find Marcus and he'll challenge you to complete the cave, which is easy enough. Once you do, he'll agree to come back to the town and then you'll find him here in the merchant area, no problem. Consumables can be the difference between a clean boss kill and a struggle. So I'd strongly recommend you do that. 
Lastly, since this feels a bit more obvious to me, is the leveling. I want you to be careful on what you spend your levels on. It's not always best to take your main damage stat, like strength in my case, and spam level that. If you don't have a bare minimum of health and stamina, you're going to get killed too quick. You're not going to have the stamina to do that extra swing while also rolling out of the incoming damage. Having a bare minimum of 15 health and 15 stamina is what I would recommend for any build, and then consider increasing your damage. But I also want to highlight how effective equip load levels are, because when you do that, you can keep your weight load normal at least, while actually having all your slots effectively equipped so that I have all these enchantments compared to having a dead or empty slot. That's actually really impactful and only a couple levels in equip load will achieve that. So 15 health, 15 stamina, 12 equip load, these are the bare minimums in my opinion. Then you can think about leveling your main damage stat, but it's up to you. Survivability is a bare minimum and what that means to you, you can decide. But yeah, I think those are the basics for forming a build and how to really get things going in these opening days. Naturally, I'm still learning the game myself, and these are just the things I've learned and have resulted in a smooth time for me. If there's anything you think could be added to this to help people, then please do drop it in the comments. But for now, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye